Okay, so here we are for another turn, and before we start, there was a mistake that happened, so... Oh, hold on, hold on. there was a, not so much a mistake, a uh, slight oversight, a little, little error perhaps. Okay, so this little oversight thing, <laughs> so usually when you play Mansions of Madness, each player takes their turn separately. So the first person might go and do something, and then the next person would go. And maybe something bad happened to the first player, so the second person might have to go and try to save them. Right, they might change what they were originally going to do. Because something bad might happen. Because something bad happened unexpectedly, right. Since we're playing online, and we want things to go as smoothly as possible, the investigators don't really have that option. Which is a pretty big disadvantage. Except for me, who goes at the end, so then I can kind of see you help you. Yeah, Andrea out. gets to react to what everyone's doing. Yeah. She's going last, and she's right here, so when she sees the bad stuff happening, she can oh. adjust. Oh, okay, I can just do this for my turn instead of what I was originally playing. So we agreed to a way of balancing this out a little yeah. bit, which is normally I would collect one threat token for each investigator playing. So that means every turn I'm collecting four. four. And so what we agreed to is I would just collect three. three. Okay. And so last turn, uh, as you probably saw in the video, I collected four. But thankfully, I didn't play my last one. So uh, it didn't really affect the game at all. So it wasn't really a big deal. Okay, um, no. but but I will I will then put I'll put this threat token away before okay. we begin this turn. Okay, everyone happy? Yeah. I kind of thought breaking the rules was kind of keeping in spirit of being the keeper. Okay, okay, devious. okay, Mr. Keeper. Okay, so let's begin. Oh, the other thing I want to say too is um, the players online have been great. They've been actually kind of role playing as they submit their turns. They've been coming up with little bits of dialogue that their characters <laughs> will say. Really funny. So when you hear me reading uh, or saying the dialogue, it's not me. This is this is our players who've come up with this stuff. Yeah. All right. So let's let's begin the moves. I thought I told you gals to stick with me. Jeez, I'm going to have to clean up this mess. So Michael's going to move into the room with Gloria, and he's going to fire his Tommy gun. But wait, which is horror what? check. Oh right, we have to do a horror check first. So we have to see if. These two cultists are going to freak out Michael. Now, Michael's got a willpower of eight, so she's going to have to roll eight or less. Five. Five, so the first cultist doesn't scare him. What about the second cultist? Maybe that cultist is freakier. Seven. Seven, so he's not afraid. He's got a big gun. So he's now going to do his attack. And what it says here is, uh, I'm going to draw a combat card for Michael. It says, you carefully line up your shot and fire. Test your marksmanship. Now, he's got a pretty good marksmanship. He's, he has to get a seven or less to hit. One. A one, so that's a definite hit. Now, this says here, the top half of its head is completely blown off. Yeah. Deal your weapon damage plus two. So his weapon damage would normally be three. three. He's getting that plus two. It's going to be five. Let's see how much health this cultist has. There you go. Health of five. Blow that cultist away. Done. Now there's a special rule here, the Tommy gun actually gets to fire a second time if Michael does damage the first time it attacks, and he sure did. So I'm going to draw another ranged weapon card here. It says, you aim carefully for your enemy's heart. Text marksmanship minus one. Six or less. Six or less. And it's eight. an ace, so it's a miss. And what it says there, if you miss, your shot goes high and grazes its shoulder. Deal one damage. So we're going to put one damage here on the cultist. So Michael now indicated that after he attempted to kill the cultist, he was going to move back into the uh, corner hallway. So in order to do that, he's going to have to evade the cultist that's in the room with him right now. And uh, he's going to have to do a dexterity test. So he has to get two or less. <sighs> Good luck, Andrea. Thanks. Seven. Seven. So he's going to get hit by the cultist. The cultist is going to do a total of one damage. Um, so that's not going to be too bad. So we're going to put a damage token on Michael, and Michael gets to move into that hallway. So Michael's health now is 13. It will be a cold day in hell before some wacko in pajamas scares Gloria Goldberg. So Gl Gloria is going to move into the uh, north hallway. And she's going to have to evade that uh, cultist as well. And her dexterity is three. Woo! There we go. She gets an eight. eight. <laughs> so she's going to get hit with one damage. And then she's going to move two spaces north. One. And explore. Two. So you can flip this over. And she has found the Saturnian wine, which is an equipment. And it gives her the action to discard this card and heal one damage and one horror. Cool. Harvey looks to the door after gazing over the room. 
Oh, hello, Kate. Always did figure you to be the one with brains. No sense in rushing off into danger. Let's see what we have here. So Harvey's going to explore the room, and uh, this card on top is an obstacle. The room crackles with electricity. You must solve wiring puzzle number 3A to discard this card and continue exploring the room. So there's been a short circuit in the room, and we're going to set up a puzzle here and take a look at it, and we're going to see if Andrew can solve it. So this is the puzzle that Harvey has to solve, and it's actually a real puzzle, okay? We've got different pieces here. This is the start piece, and it has a start point and an end point on it. And then these other pieces are randomly placed. Um, and so Harvey's got to get this wire box, which has a red wire coming out of it, connected to this wire box, which has a blue wire coming into it. And so to do that, they have to, uh, Andrew's going to have to rotate, which costs one action, or swap, which you can move them, you can swap the pieces with the adjacent pieces, that costs one action. Or, if you just don't like the piece at all, you can discard it for two actions and draw a new random piece, which maybe, hopefully, will work better. And so you only have so many turns uh, that you can use, or so many actions you can perform per turn, and that's based on the character's intellect. So Harvey has an intellect seven. of seven. So Andrew gets to do seven different actions to try to solve this puzzle. Okay, first move. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. If I spend a clue token, do I get to add three to that? Yes. Now that's the other thing we didn't mention is is you can spend a clue token, and then you will get um, your luck value in more turns. So Harvey has luck of three. Has a luck of three. So by trading in a clue token, or actually they call it skill points. We're kind of mixing that up with Arkham Horror or different yeah. games. If you, if you spend a skill point, then Harvey's gonna get three more actions for this puzzle. So he has one and left I, over. So it's that's gonna be four, four in total. Okay. So I'm going to spend one of these, yep. and I'm going to swap out this piece for another piece. Another piece. And this one the is going to look like up. this. So now you have two turns left. One, two. And look at that. You have solved the puzzle. So we have Nicely red, done. red, blue, blue, red, red, blue, 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 blue. That was cutting it very, very close. Ta-da! <laughs> that Harvey is pretty smart for an old guy. So Harvey has solved the short circuit puzzle. We'll discard that card there, and we'll see what other cards are here. So the first thing he's found is startling evidence. It's an equipment, and it will give him an action, which allows him to discard this card to take two horror. So he's actually going to have to take two horror, but the keeper must then tell him which room the next clue card is in. Oh, that's cool. All right. So it's scary evidence that will cause him some uh, pain to his sanity, but it will give him some useful information. There's also another card here. It says you find nothing of interest. So that's, that's all we had there. And now Harvey, for his turn, wants to shuffle south a little bit more and head towards the library so he can step into the library. There we go. Now it's Kate's turn. Okay, so for my turn, I'm going to do one move then a second move, and I'm going to explore. All right, we're going to explore this room. Let's see what we find here. You find nothing of interest. Woohoo! Anything you want to say to Harvey while you're in the room with him here? Um, you know what, Harvey? At first, I wasn't too keen on following you in there because, you know, I do love books, but we I think we're going to be heading down to the basement, but I think we might be able to figure out something if we start going down towards here because we got some puzzles and we both have the braids to unlock those so we don't really need to worry. So it's the keeper's turn uh, and the first thing that happens to the keeper's turn is players can trade equipment if they want but that's not going to happen so now I get to gain my threat and I'm going to take four. Three. Okay I'll take three as we agreed. So I have three threat. I am going to um, I'm going to place I spend one to summon another worshiper, so I'm going to place another cultist um, here, and let's see. I'm then going to spend another token 
to move this cultist here and then here. So for my last action, I am going to perform the Dark Ritual, which for each cultist in play is going to let me draw either one Trauma card or one Mythos card. I haven't really talked to you about Trauma cards yet. Trauma cards are a card I get to play whenever an investigator gets mentally hurt or physically hurt. Um, they'll have To make us even more hurt. Yeah, even more hurt, add more pain, insult right. to injury. So on the card it might say, you know, if, uh, if an investigator takes a wound, you can play this card. And they break a knee or something. They might break their knee, you know, back, uh, blind them, who knows what. Um, so I'm going to get to draw four of any combination of those cards. So I'm going to grab two trauma cards. Actually, I think I'm going to draw three trauma cards and one mythos card. The only rule is there is a limit to how many of both mythos cards and trauma cards I can have at a time. Five. Yeah, it's five of each. I can only have five of each. But I'm well under my limit. So I now have two mythos cards and three trauma cards. And that is the end of my turn because when I do the dark ritual, it says my cultists cannot attack this game round. And uh, the next step would be for them to attack, and then they can't. They can't anymore. And, oh, the very last thing is I need to put another time token here, an event token on the card. That's the end of the turn. So until next time. Until next time.